Don't forget, you can reach the latest episode of Potomac Watch anytime. Just ask your smart speaker. Play the Opinion Potomac Watch podcast. From the Opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Welcome back. Kim, we're now on day two of poring over this 4,200-page omnibus spending bill that Congress released recently. And we talked about some of this yesterday, some of the big provisions and the top line spending numbers, $1.7 trillion yesterday. But I thought we might do some cleanup here and see if there was anything else that popped up that is worth highlighting in this bill before Congress votes on it without reading it. Yeah, I think the bigger question is what isn't in this bill? And that's a really remarkable thing is the degree to which they have just tacked on all kinds of provisions. Like as we go through it, for instance, we see that there's a waiver in here to let Boeing blow past one of its deadlines for getting its 737 MAX airplane model certified. There's uh, some provisions in here dealing with the industry of horse racing, which seem to have something to do with Kentucky Senator Mitch McConnell, since that's his home state. There are new rules in here governing the lobster industry. There are provisions to phase out large-scale drift net fishing. There's a boost, by the way, I think this is a a really important one because it's notable it got through. There was a 30% increase in spending for something called the Child Care and Development Block Grant Program, which is a program that the left very much wants to use to turn into a universal entitlement. It's essentially money that goes out to provide child care dollars to families. And when the Biden administration was negotiating its Build Back Better bill, they envisioned this turning into essentially a universal middle class entitlement. So this is Democrats trying to grow that program while nobody is looking. There was also an interesting provision, one of the few things that looks actually good in this bill, some changes to retirement savings accounts including basically making it a little bit easier for small businesses to engage in retirement planning, but also raising the age at which Americans have to begin taking out disbursements from their accounts to age 75 instead of age 72. That's one of the few things in here that actually was good. The rest of this is all a bunch of junk. Well, let me give a tip of the hat to Congressman Dan Bishop, who has done a long tweet thread Going through some of the provisions here, I'll highlight a few. He says the word salmon appears 48 times in the bill, and there are millions of dollars in programs for salmon. There's $3 million for bee-friendly highways, and the legislative text here, it refers to the pollinator-friendly practices on roadsides and highway rights-of-way program. There's a provision to designate the federal building in San Francisco, California, as the Speaker Nancy Pelosi Federal Building There's also some money for a foreign service program that shall be hereafter named the Nancy Pelosi Fellowship Program. There is $3.6 million in an earmark for the Michelle Obama Trail. And let's do one more. There is some language here for the Continuous Plankton Recorder Survey, which I guess is an effort to troll the world's oceans and check on the plankton as a way of gauging the water quality and the environmental quality And, Manet, I think this bill is going to be the gift that keeps on giving over Christmas as reporters and members of Congress keep digging through these 4,200 pages and pulling out things that are of note to the taxpayers who are actually paying the bill on this. Yes, there are plenty of laughs to be had, and part of our job is doing the deep dive that ordinary Americans don't have the time to do and finding some of the crazy stuff that's tucked into this bill. I do think that there are a couple of tragedies here. One is that basically there's just joint culpability. Almost every single member of Congress gets some special deal out of the omnibus bill, which means that they basically dodge the attention. Who are you going to single out for condemnation when hundreds and hundreds of our legislators have put some special ask into this massive bill? And so I think very few of them are likely to be criticized. But I also think that almost all of the good parts of the bill, things like that change to retirement savings that Kim pointed out, would have passed on their own. And basically, the structure of the omnibus bill allows a whole bunch of these completely indefensible spending provisions to be attached to a bill that is funding some important changes in priorities. And so that's a way for these legislators also to 
basically get their impossible asks funded. And so it's the wrong way to do the legislative business of funding the government. But there's a whole political history behind how we arrived at this moment. And it seems very likely this thing is going to pass as is. Kim, we'll give you the last word. But does it seem like from where you sit that this is a bill that is still steamrolling forward? And what do the opponents have against bees and salmon? (laughs) At this point, Kyle, it seems hard to see any way that this stops. We still have some Republican senators who are suggesting that they may throw up a delay. That would be, to me, the only thing that could potentially derail this is if it looked as though it's going to get pushed past Thursday because there's a storm bearing down on the country, as a lot of people have noticed, and it looks like there's going to be some chaos at the airports, and congressmen and senators want to get home to their districts and states to be with their families for Christmas. So that would be the only thing. But look, in terms of all of this stuff we're talking about, if someone wants to go and make a really good argument for the continual Plankton project and everyone wants to have a vote and put down where they stand on that, fine. But it's like Manet said, this is the worst and kind of grossest form of government in which a bunch of guys disappear into a back room. Everybody doles out things to themselves. It all gets put together in one bill where nobody has any accountability. No one has a chance to read it, and everyone votes for it and rushes out of town. And this is unfortunately what we are now doing every year when it comes to funding the government. Thank you, Kim and Manet. Thank you all for listening. You can email us at pwpodcast at wsj.com. If you like the show, please hit that subscribe button, and we'll be back tomorrow with another edition of Potomac Watch. (laughs) 